Welcome back to another episode of Grizzly Books True Crime. My name is Gizzler K. You can call me Gizzler G, Grizzly, Gizzy, not Jizzy, uh, Grizzler, <laughs> G-Unit, G-12, or any combination of the above. Today I'm going to be talking about, we've been talking so much about uh, the Gabby Petito case. And I find it quite strange how... When I read articles, it's like uh, Brian Laundrie's attorney has just thrown out the possibility that Gabby's disappearance and potential murder could be linked at all to the murder of two women in Moab who spotted the couple on the day that the, the body cam footage was taken. So I'm just going to show you on the map. This won't be too long. I just want to show you and let's think out loud together. I just want to show you the locations because it's actually quite shocking when you just look at the facts. <gasps> Let's get started. So the couple that you can see, let me point in the right direction, <laughs> on this side um, over here are Kylan Schulter and Crystal Turner. Now, Kylan Schulter worked at the Moonflower Co-op for four years, before 2021, for four years she was working there. Everyone loved her, people said she was very friendly. Okay, so that is the place the location outside of the Moonflower Co-op. That's the place where Gabby Petito and Brian Laundry were witnessed having a fight. And the witness that called 911 said that Brian Laundry was the one slapping and hitting Gabby Petito, locking her out of the van, putting her backpack on the back of the van, and then she ran around to the car and she couldn't get into any of the doors, so she jumped through the driver's seat uh, window when Brian was sitting in the car, climbed over him, and they drove off. So the witness who called was allegedly neither of these two women, but apparently Brian was also fighting with Gabby over her phone. So that detail is also interesting to me. But don't you find it so bizarre that... The women were found dead on the 18th of August, but the last time they were ever seen alive was on the 13th of August at Woody's Tavern. I'm going to show you on the map any moment now. They were at Woody's Tavern on the 13th of August, never seen alive again. Found dead with gunshot wounds in their camper, partially dressed. So it looks like it could have been an, um, a sexual assault as well as murder. So we don't know about the sexual assault part. I mean, we don't know if maybe they were having a romantic night and then someone came and shot them. We don't know. But I find it quite interesting to think that, nope, nope, Brian is not involved at all. Especially because in the beginning, we all thought Gabby was missing. We had no clue about what was going on. But now they have found remains that match her descriptions. And now the forensics will confirm if that's 100% true or not, which I believe it is based on them seeing tattoos and seeing the physical description matching and her parents accepting her loss and, you know, putting that out there in social media. We'll see what happens and what actually happened to Gabby Petito. But to me, this is very a very strange coincidence. So I just thought I would cover it. I want to show you now, I'm going to take their beautiful image off now, and I will show you the map, <laughs> me and the maps. And for all of you going, <laughs> we all know how to use a Google map. I know, but like, uh, I'd just like to show you, <laughs> just to show, just to display how close this all is. Now, earlier I said Moen Motel, but it's actually Bowen Motel. I went back and re-looked at the footage. Um, it's Bowen Motel, okay? Now look at this. This is where the Moonflower Co-op, the Moonflower Community Cooperative is, where Gabby Petito and Brian Laundry were fighting outside. 
and actually in the store. Someone said they were fighting in the store and then Gabby walked out for a bit and then she came back to the store and then they were fighting more and they went outside and there was Brian slapping and hitting Gabby. So, and then driving off. This, that is where the, the, the Moonflower Community Cooperative is. Look at the Moab coffee, coffee roasters across the road. And then you just have to turn the corner. And there is the Bowen Motel. Can you see it? Like, do you want to be any closer to it? It's, it's a block. It's insane, actually. How close this is. It's across the road. It's where he would probably go to get food. There's a Love Muffin Cafe takeout. Moonflower Co-op. And the motel where <laughs> Brian was staying. Could it be any closer? Now let's see where... Now you say, but... Okay. Kylan Schulte was working there that day. Um, and both were no-show for work after the 13th. The, the police footage was on the 12th, so... So, it means that, uh, what's his face, Brian, Melon Boy, was staying in the Bowen Motel on the 12th. We do not know where Gabby Petito was staying. In her van she was, but we don't know where she parked her van or where she went that night. Maybe later we'll know. However, if he stayed in that motel for the night, that means the next day, on the 13th, the last time uh, that... The couple are seen alive, so I would assume that then it means Kylan worked that day and that night herself and Crystal Turner went to Woody's Tavern, which we'll look at right now. How close is that? This is the world famous Woody's Tavern. That is how close that is. It's pretty close, right? It's very, very close. I mean, honestly. So let's speculate. Let's say that Brian's uh, ego was annihilated by him even having to deal with this whole like police situation, the embarrassment of people seeing them fighting and then, you know, being taken to this motel. And the police did say that they have to be separated for the night and not contact each other. We don't know if they actually did that or if maybe Gabby found him. Or they texted each other because we don't know if they texted each other or not. What if they texted each other and he said, I'm there. So anyway, he would have stayed there, let's say on the 12th. On the 13th, they would be reunited via the phone or whatever. And no one checked on them either, which I find really strange. Like separate for the night and then good to go. Like, where is the follow up? Like, how are they doing now? So if they met up on the 13th. Were they still staying in the van? Did he book another night at the motel? How do we know? However, if we look at just down the road, world famous Woody's Tavern, I think maybe Gabby would have parked a car there. That's what I'm going to speculate. And maybe Brian had to walk down to meet her there. We just don't know. But that is that we don't know if they were there or not. I've seen some things, and some people speculate that they were, but we don't know that. However, we know where Brian was. He was up there in the Bowen Motel. And just about, what, four blocks down, there's the world-famous Woody's Tavern, with the last place where this couple is seen. Where are they found? If we zoom out, they themselves had a van, and also lived a van life, and they went camping. They were found here they were found south mesa around here that's all i typed in was uh i typed in south mesa wait actually i have to uh, put this down here yeah so the la Salle mountains uh south mesa somewhere along there I don't know if it's exactly here. I can't find the exact location. If you have it, please let me know because I will update this then. But they were apparently, they drove somewhere and were towards the South Mesa area, La Salle Mountains. And they were found dead in the camper 
gunshot wounds, both of them. So, hmm, what do you think about that? Let's just, I just want to type one more thing in. I find that extremely, what a coincidence, don't you think? I'm just looking one more time where the delicate arch is. Okay, that's up there. <laughs> Me and my obsession with the delicate arch. It's up there. And uh, they were somewhere around here. So would Brian have headed south? How do we know? Maybe he followed them. We don't know. Maybe they went to the tavern that night and then he was so angry with them for reporting him. Or be Maybe he thought those are the people who reported us. He doesn't know who called. It was a witness. So maybe he just assumed these women reported us and maybe he followed them. We don't know where he got a gun either. We just don't know. We don't know if he had a gun. But I find it so strange that it's like, wow, this the last time they were seen alive was on the 13th. And the 14th and 15th, they didn't pitch for work. And then people started looking for them. And they realized, wait, they packed snacks in their van and everything. And they were, they were just going camping around that mountain area. Which means, actually, if they were not seen for two days at work, I wonder which two days, you know, because they were going camping. So they probably wouldn't have just been camping for one night. They were probably going camping for a night or two after the 13th. So what if they were camping on like the 14th and 15th? Possibly murdered on the 16th or 17th. And then Brian magically gets on a plane at Salt Lake City Airport. Let's type that in instead of Delicate Arch. We'll type in this one. Brian magically, that is Fairfield Inn and Suites where Gabby was later staying. Potentially between the 17th and the 24th. She checked out on the 24th. Okay, so he, he, he goes from the motel. And magically on the 17th, he goes off back home to uh, clean out a storage unit. Now I've read some more things and I don't know if it's true or not, but what I've read is he went back to take Gabby's stuff out of the, the backyard shed and put his stuff in it. Like there was apparently, I don't know this, a storage unit and the shed. And it had Gabby's stuff and the storage unit, his stuff. And he swapped those two things around, which is very strange, possibly. Allegedly, speculatively, we yet to confirm all of this, but I just find it so strange that if you think um, the couple, Kylan was last working, um, possibly, right, on the 13th. They were definitely there on the 12th. Kylan was working on the 12th. So on the 13th, they say she's working. They go to the tavern, the couple at night, Woody's Tavern, and they want to go camping. I don't know if they would go camping right after that, driving at night. I'm not too sure. So let's say... They go camping on the 14th. And let's say that Brian is like, hmm, so angry with these people, he might follow them. Or might talk to them, befriend them, we don't know. And go over there, kill them, and magically on the 17th, that's the time you're going to disappear? So that you're not in the area at all? That's weird. And what's even weirder is then... Possibly on the 27th. He returns on the 23rd. Gabby checks out of the Fairfield Inn on the 24th. So the van is around there. Who knows what it's doing during that time. Hopefully we'll get the information. But he's supposedly away back home. Is he though? We don't know. But then he comes back. And on the 24th they start making their way up north. Towards Grand Teton National Park. And by around the 27th. Gabby's dead. Maybe she knew this, that, that he did this. Maybe he took the van by himself and followed them and did this. Maybe she heard about them being found dead. Because that was on the 18th that they were discovered. And maybe that really unsettled the relationship that was already on the rocks. And within 11 days, 10, even 10 days, even nine days, within nine days, Gabby's gone too? 
Now, I just think it would be a great coincidence if this is one random killer and then in Grand Teton Park there's this other random killer. It's possible, but it would, it just, it's a little bit strange with the one thing tying all of that together, what did they all, what did all the victims have in common? Brian, Laundry, they all saw him, saw him assaulting her, uh -huh, reported him, and affected his ego. That's all I can say, and I do want to say, I want to send my condolences to the family of Kaylin, Kaylin, I hope I'm saying it right, Kaylin or Kaylin Schulter and Crystal Turner. Heartfelt condolences to you. They don't have answers either. And their case is not as publicized right now. This also is very important. We need to find out what happened to them. So absolute condolences, heartfelt condolences go out to them. If you also want to comment some hearts, pick a color, I don't know. Sometimes I've seen on channels they say like blue hearts for... For instance, we did Blue Hearts for Gannon Stauch when I covered that case. So there's a yellow flower. Let's say yellow hearts for this beautiful couple over here. Or purple hearts. When I think of the Moonflower Co-op, it was like purple on the outside. Or yellow and purple hearts. Let's send those in the comments and give them our condolences. For one second, I actually just want to zoom into this ring over here. Because it looks so much like Gabby's ring. It really does. Meh. I don't think it's quite the same, but it could be interesting. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think. I know a lot of us think that it's definitely tied. And I know that I think it's Kylan's uh, or Kaylin's father is very upset that the police and the attorney of Brian Laundry are just like, no, 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 this is not linked. We don't think it's linked. But then, okay, who did it? Who done it? What's going on over here? And how do we know he never carried a gun? How do we know? We just don't know. I mean, if he's all out there for, you know, out in the wild off grid, he might have carried a gun for protection. What about bears? What about wolves? What about how is he going to protect himself? What, you got some bear spray there? I just think you might be the type of guy to carry a gun. We just don't know. Thank you so much for watching. Hit the like button. Subscribe. Comment below. Remember, purple and yellow hearts. Comment below. We need to also pay attention to this couple who was brutally, brutally murdered, shot, and left partially undressed in the camper van. That tells me someone was very, very angry. Who else do we know that was very, very angry, that conceals his anger so well? I'll leave it at that.